Hello there. One of the questions or objections that I often hear uh, is the question, well, why don't you just move on? You are no longer a witness or you no longer um, agree with witness beliefs. Why don't you just walk away from it? Why, why do you feel the need to talk about it, do videos, write articles, that kind of thing? And probably if you're an activist like me, you've heard that question a lot yourself. So I thought, well, why not do a video to address that particular objection? And here's how I would uh, answer that objection. And I think I'll do it with an illustration. Imagine that you had a family friend who everyone in your family knew and loved. And this friend uh, asked to loan $35,000 from you. And it was a, an unusual situation where they needed the money now, but they could repay you like in a week or so. And you had the money and you loaned your friend the $35,000. But a week comes and goes and you say to your friend, can I have my money back? And he says, no, no, I won't be giving you your money back. And if you try complaining about it, I'll deny it. And I'll tell people that I have paid it you back. So basically, you've been completely stabbed in the back by someone you trusted. And so what happens is that precisely as your friend says, you start telling your, your family, your friends, this is what so-and-so did. Uh, but instead of sympathising with you, because he is so good at manipulating them, they all assume that you're in the wrong, that he has paid you back, and for some reason you just have an axe to grind against him. So this friend not only steals a vast amount of money from you, he also succeeds in turning your family against you. If you were then told, say, by a psychologist, well, what you need to do is move on, that wouldn't sit well with you because you have a situation where an injustice has been done against you and the person who has done that injustice against you has walked away scot-free without any ramifications and, in fact, is making things worse. And that's essentially why I think that people who say, oh, you need to move on, are missing, are missing the point, are failing to understand precisely what Watchtower does to people. Because I am a victim of Watchtower. All ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, and Witnesses, indeed Witnesses, are victims of Watchtower because they are, or well, they have been manipulated into wasting a huge amount of time in doing nothing more than serving an organization. And there's a reason why I chose $35,000 in my illustration. And that reason is that I recently did um, a calculation of how many hours I did when I was pioneering. And I pioneered from September 1998 through to March 2009. Now I should say that I didn't pioneer continuously through that period. Uh, I did come off pioneering for a brief period and there were other things that happened such as my mum died and um, I did hardly any hours that year and I was given concessions or whatever. But nevertheless I've worked out because I kept records and for the months that I, I have lost my records, I've done a reasonable estimate of what hours I would have done. I worked out that I did 5,359 hours over that period of nearly 10 years. So that's 223 days or nearly seven and a half months if it was all done continuously. That is not a small amount of time. 
In fact, I've worked out that if I was being paid minimum wage by UK law for that um, for those amount of hours, I would I would be better off by twenty one thousand pounds, which is thirty five thousand dollars. So that's why I picked thirty five thousand dollars. Now I'm not saying that necessarily. Um, I'm not saying necessarily that that is um, money that was stolen from me. My point is that I could have been using that time in a far more meaningful way, either to better myself financially so that I'm not in the situation I'm in now, or to educate myself, to make myself um, able to make more of a contribution to the world around me. and more of a contribution to my future family. And that is time, seven and a half months worth of time, not including, by the way, attending meetings, preparing for meetings, doing personal study, going to and from meetings, assemblies, conventions, field service, not including that time. So, and yet I'll, I'll never be repaid for that. I'll never be able to have that time back, it's gone it's been stolen from me without so much as an apology and what makes it worse is that the organization that took that time from me continues to take it from other people and operates right in, in front of me right under my nose with my own family it doesn't just take my family hostage it doesn't just estrange me from my family it weaponizes my family, it manipulates them against me, it makes them believe that I am evil, that I am mentally diseased, that I have a problem, that they have done nothing wrong and so that it's, it's far worse, it's far worse than simply having my family held hostage, my family is made to hate me. So that's why I frankly well, I try not to take offence, but anyone who says that you should just move on when an aggressor who has, who has damaged you, who has, who has taken something from you, continues to take things from others, continues to operate without any kind of punishment, without any kind of reprisals, without any kind of consequences, and does so under your very nose, influencing those that you love, so that on a daily basis you're reminded of what's been done to you. Anyone who says I should move on from that doesn't understand what Watchtower's doing, doesn't understand my situation, or if they do understand those things, they're being deeply insulting. So that would be my answer to anyone who says, well, you should, you should just move on. You do realize that, don't you? Uh, no. Um, eventually, I hope to reach a stage where I've made a contribution that I feel happy with and I feel I can kind of back down a little bit. I do hope to reach that stage someday. I'm nowhere near it at the moment. But as of now, while I have the energy, while I have the time, while I have the willpower, and the ability, this is what I'm doing. And uh, if you don't like it, then tough. There was just something else I wanted to add, and that is that one of the most amazing things I've learned <laughs> since doing my activism against Watchtower is that the, the majority of opposition that I get, the majority of criticism, of negativity that I get is not from Watchtower and is not from even Jehovah's Witnesses. It actually comes, I would say, the majority of, of opposition to my work has come from within the XJW community. And there's a number of reasons for that. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about the um, anti-activism approach that some people take. So some, some um, XJ, XJWs wake up from their indoctrination 
and they seem to take the approach that activism is pointless that if you write articles and make videos with a view to helping people escape Watchtower indoctrination, you're wasting your time, you're making things worse for the people that you make videos for by scaring them away, this sort of thing. Now, what those people, this is how I view those kinds of people who say that kind of thing. It's almost as though they've made it out, out of Watchtower's indoctrination and their attitude is now, I made it out, screw everyone else. I managed to escape Watchtower's indoctrination and I really don't care whether anyone else manages to make it out themselves. As long as I'm okay, that's fine. Which I consider to be, I know that's not how they would view it, but that's how it comes across to me. And I consider that kind of attitude to be extremely selfish. Another thing that it's important to remember is that there are many stages to waking up uh, from indoctrination. So the way I look at it is, is this way. Imagine there was a river and two sides of the river and on one side of the river you have complete indoctrination under Watchtower's mind control and on the other side of the river you have uh, mental freedom, freedom from indoctrination. And there's a bridge there's a bridge between, a bridge exists between the two states, okay? And imagine that every now and then, so you have a, like a crowd of, let's say, eight million witnesses on Watchtower's indoctrination side. You, you notice that, you know, a lot of, a lot of these eight million are kind of pushing as far away from the river as possible. They don't want to be anywhere near a state where they might wake up. But every now and then, you do see just a, a small number mingling near the bridge. And a small number of those sometimes venture onto the bridge and just go as far across the bridge as they can before being on the side of the bridge that belongs to being free from indoctrination. And that's what's happening. That's what XJWs who criticise activism forget, is that there are lots of stages to freeing yourself from indoctrination. And sometimes uh, a witness can be in a frame of mind or something might happen to them or they might read something that just triggers uh, doubt, that just triggers this idea of maybe this isn't the truth. And when that happens, they need somebody on the other side of the bridge to just hold out their hand and help them across. A perfect example of that is Crisis of Conscience. Ray Franz was an activist. You do not write a book of that kind unless you care about people, unless you care about helping people. But Crisis of Conscience is just one way of helping people. Not everybody, even not not every witness who's waking up even knows about crisis of conscience. There needs to be other ways. There needs to be websites. There needs to be videos. There needs to be a well phrased, a well worded comment on a blog or on a video that just causes a witness to think they've got a point there. They've got a point. I wonder what else they have to say. And it, it's, as I say, it's like that hand on the bridge, just helping that person across the threshold into being awake. Um, so not every video and not every article necessarily is targeted at um, heavily indoctrinated witnesses. I understand that if you're a completely indoctrinated witness, nothing that I say, nothing I do, nothing I write will make the slightest bit of difference. But if you are on the bridge, if you are wavering or you have, you have doubts, you're starting to see um, glitches in the matrix, to use that analogy, and you think something's not right here, you need that helping hand to help you across. And another thing I wanted to say was that it's not just 
witnesses who get helped by activism. Why do I say that? Because uh, not every formal witness is awake. Not every XJW is, has escaped their indoctrination. And I get emails and YouTube messages sometimes from people who are thanking, thanking me because they have been, they've been disfellowshipped for, for maybe 10, 12, 20 years. And in all that time, they have been loathing themselves, fearing Armageddon, completely convinced that they've left the truth, that it's the truth. And only after watching a video or reading an article have they fight, has the penny finally dropped and they're now able to live their lives without this self-loathing, without believing that they're doomed, without believing that they're deficient. And again, that is what those who criticize activism fail to understand, that it's not just witnesses who benefit, it's ex-witnesses too. If you, if you believe that every former witness is awake, is free from indoctrination, then I'm sorry you don't know what you're talking about. And you're underestimating how powerful Watchtower's mind control is. So I just wanted to, I'm sorry if, I, if I've come across as ranting at all during this video. Um, I wanted to get that off my chest. Um, another thing that witnesses say is that uh, former witnesses like me are bitter, that we're angry, you get that hurled at you a lot. And I guess in a way I am, I am bitter and I am angry and I, I have every right to be because I've had my family used as a weapon against me. I defy anyone not to be angry when they have an aggressor damage them, take something from them and make things even worse by manipulating their family against them. But it's not, um, it's not important whether you get angry or not. It's natural to get angry under those situations. What's important is how you channel your anger, how you channel your bitterness. Uh, there's a lot of energy there and you can, you can lash out and you can use it to scare witnesses even deeper into their indoctrination, to confront them, to be aggressive towards them, to intimidate them. You can do that if you want, but you will find that it doesn't help. You will find that it only strengthens the persecution complex among witnesses. It's far better to just, and I'm not saying I'm the role model in this by any means, but it's far better if you can to try and control that energy and release it in a way that is constructive, positive, uh, calm, reasonable. And you never know, you might just help someone. And it, I would submit that helping people, especially helping people who, who don't really know you or who might never even know who you are because you've left a comment somewhere, you've made a video and it's helped someone in the future who may never even meet you. I think that there's nothing more poetic about life than that. So I hope this video has been useful and thank you for watching.